I'm Mandy Goheen, and I'm the director of prison ministry, and today I am not going to talk to you about prison ministry. In fact, I'm going to talk to you about a time that I changed my mind about never changing my mind, and it just happened this summer. So here's the deal. I made two promises. Have you ever made a promise that you just knew in your heart that you were going to keep? Both of these promises were like that. They were the kind that I just was certain down deep in my spirit that there would be nothing that would disrupt me from these two things. The first thing on the list was to prepare this summer to go see the Ministerial Fellowshipping Committee and take one of my last steps into ministry. And in order to do that, there was a lot of paperwork, background checks and references, and all kinds of different tasks, a humongous reading list, and all these tasks that I needed to accomplish by August 4th to be able to go see the Ministerial Fellowshipping Committee in September. But I made another promise, too. I promised my kids that we were going to go on vacation this summer, and not just any old vacation. We were going to go on the grandparent world tour, as we called it, and we traveled all over the eastern United States and went from Alabama to North Carolina to Ohio to West Virginia to D.C. We were all over the place, and it was just vacations that stories are made of. I hate to brag, but like my kids didn't even fight on this vacation. It was just that fun and that wonderful. Problem though, there's a tension here, right? I've made these two announcements, these two commitments to the universe. One, that I'm going to see the Ministerial Fellowshipping Committee. And on top of that, I had some arrogance about both of these proclamations that I had made to the universe. I'm going to see the Ministerial Fellowshipping Committee, and I'm going to be able to have this fabulous summer with my kids. What I didn't anticipate was that when it would come to sitting in the sand and making sandcastles, which is fabulous, or reading a book by Mark Morrison Reed called The Selma Awakening, which is also fabulous. It was a no-brainer for me. The time with my kids superseded any big decision I had made about my career and how I was going to move forward into ministry. Because in the middle of my theology is this place where God resides, which is in the, in the process of relational exchanges. And I was in the most divine situation possible being with my four youngest kids and just getting to either bait fish hooks, go on a boat ride, or write an essay about why I'm a great minister. And every time it was just not a choice. Relationships took priority every time. Playing took priority every time. By the first three days, I knew I was in the weeds. I knew that I was not going to get ready for the MFC. Regardless of the fact that I had made a promise and I had said out loud to the universe that number one, I was ready for this appointment and number two, that I don't get why anyone would reschedule their appointment. That doesn't make any sense. I've waited too long for this appointment, and it's time for me to go. So even with this arrogant attitude of perfection and overcompensation and overcommitment, which are all part of systemic white supremacy, right? All that stuff, all that white supremacy culture was just driving me in my head that I needed to still be perfect and complete these two things at the same time. Well, that's just not possible. And then I had to make a choice and I had to make a change. So what did I learn from all of this, I guess? And what 
am I trying to tell you and how can you learn from this change that I've gone through? Well, one of the things I learned is I really need helpers in my life to help me say no. Are you bad at that? Are you bad at saying no when someone asks you for something? Especially like saying no for something that's expected of me. And so I really need people to help me stay on task and be realistic about how much I can get done. So that's one thing I learned this summer. Another thing I learned this summer was just the arrogance is really unnecessary. Me being judgmental about people missing their MFC appointment is really condescending and not kind and I'm catching myself on that as I say I had to reschedule my appointment. I had to change my mind about never changing my mind. I had this fabulous vacation with my kids and I'm still going to go see the Ministerial Fellowshipping Committee in December now. And it's all working out for the best. And if I had really listened to my heart the whole time, I could have relieved myself of a lot of stress and a lot of unrealistic expectations about what I could get done. And I want to communicate that to you. Like, saying no can be a real blessing to people. Changing your mind can be a real blessing to people, even if you said you'd never change your mind. Because, number one, it opens the doors for new people to have new opportunities when you don't step into every single slot someone expects you to step into. And number two, you have got to take care of yourself, and I have got to take care of myself, and I can't do that in an overcommitted state. That month that I want to spend in July with my kids every summer is sacred time and it's important and it doesn't mean I should throw off all my responsibilities but it means I should set my priorities and be more flexible be willing to change when change is necessary even when I said I would never change my mind